Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for clicking in and joining in on this broadcast today. Uh, I am Sandra Louise, and life after the comma really does get better. So if this is your first time joining us, thank you so much for taking the time. You could have been watching anything else, but you chose to come here. So thank you so much. And those of you who have been following me for a while, thank you also for being here. I appreciate you. And I just wanted to come on here because I know it has, a, it's been a little bit before since I've last done a live to screen um, video. And so I just wanted to come on today just to kind of bring you up to speed on what has been going on. And, um, and first, I just want to say, life is good. Life is good. And I know that there's a lot of things going on. And it doesn't mean that we're without struggles, because I've certainly had my fair share. And, uh, and I think we all have, you know, um, but I just want to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, and no matter what you have faced, and maybe facing, that you're born a winner, you know, that you win, we've read the book, we've read the story, that no matter what we go through, if we are followers of Christ, the end result is that we win. So I just want to encourage you with that. Okay. So as uh, many of you know, I returned to school in the fall of 2023. It was something that had always been on the back burner, but through, you know, life happens <laughs> And it doesn't always go the way we think it's going to go. So the last time I had been in school and I actually returned to the last school that I had attended um, back in uh, 82 was the last time I had been there. And coming back after all of those years and making that decision that I was going to continue what I had started. And this time having a real why, you know, I realized that over the years we have, you know, we have seasons in our lives and the season for me returning to school was then was now. And it's been so evident in the classes that I've taken, the experiences that I've had just in the several months that I've been and I went from fall through summer, and I'm actually on a hiatus right now until fall. And the grace of God has just been on me to do so well. I'm currently sitting at a three point, uh, a little over a three point average right now. And I'm so happy about that. And the challenges that I thought were going to be challenges, I'm telling you, I have seen the grace of God in everything um, from the assignments that I've had, the classes that I've taken. Um, they've all correlated to what I was doing in real life. And so in many instances, I was able to do homework assignments that were actually things that I was doing for life after the comma or uh, other projects that I was doing that I was actually able to combine the two that they just kind of fell in line. They just kind of fell in line. Uh, with what I was doing at the time. And it's just been amazing. It's just been amazing. And it's opened up so many opportunities for me as well. I was just uh, recently asked to be on a panel for returning students like myself, who had been a, either been away from school and coming back after so many years, or who had just hadn't continued their education past high school, but are now deciding to come back. And it was so 
it was so humbling to one be asked to be uh, one of the speakers there. There were two of us, and it was really interesting. She had returned after 20 years, uh, so she's a bit younger than I am, but she was, you know, she was a returning student uh, going into nursing, uh, and she returned in 22 and a single mom. So she's in another season of her life, but, you know, she's, she's doing well. And, and then here I am, you know, coming back after over 40 years, having, you know, raised my children, been married and, you know, doing all of the things, lifing, you know, from, for the past 40 some odd years, and then finding myself in this season of my life. And it was interesting as I was listening to her and she was talking about, you know, her why. And it's so important for us to know not only why we do things, but also having a, a sense of knowing who you are and not comparing yourself to somebody else. Because for her, her why is, you know, for her son and for, you know, mainly for her son and to make sure that she's given him everything that he needs. And, um, and so in doing that, it was really interesting to me because for me, it was, it was a little different because I recognize the season. I'm in a different season than she is. When I was in the season of raising my children, when I was in the season of being married, when I was in the season of, you know, bringing, you know, help raising my family and doing all of the things that I was doing throughout these last 40 some odd years, that is what I had the grace for. But being in this season of life, it's different. Because now the season that I'm in is to, and I use this analogy, that, you know, when you're on an airplane and you're traveling and you're the one who is responsible for whoever you're traveling with and they tell you in the case of an emergency, what they tell you to do is put the oxygen mask on yourself first because they know that caregivers, people who are nurturers and responsible for other people, their first inclination is to help them first. But what they know is if you were to do that, you would both perish because they're depending on you. And so during the time, during the season that I was raising my family and I was doing all of those things, I had the grace to do that. Now, I'm taking the culmination of all of the things, all my life's experiences and all of those things in this season of my life. And me going back to school now is to help me do the things that I have been doing and do it better. Sharpening my skills, being able to be more, um, more fluent in the things that God has given me to do. And so it's not, I'm not doing it for everybody else per se. I'm doing it for myself so that I can be better for everybody else. And so my perspective is a little bit different now because I realize that I have to pour into me as much as I pour into everyone else. I have to get poured into. And this season in my life, coming back to school, I'm actually coming back in a position where I'm actually able to give just as much as I'm receiving. The fact that I was asked to be on that panel was one example of that. Had I not gone through the things that I've gone through, I wouldn't have as much to share. I wouldn't have the experience behind me to say, look, you can do this. I can tell people who are on the fence of, you know, am I too old? Is it too late? And can I, is there really something? Yes, it is. And you owe it to yourself to become a better version of yourself. One of the things that I, um, that I mentioned 
when I was asked about, you know, some of my biggest struggles since I've been there. And I was telling them, I said, for me, it's been talking, it's been uh, countering that inner voice that tries to get me to think that I can't do or all of those, um, what they call the imposter syndrome, where we're talking ourselves out of what's scary to us. And I, um, and I was telling my cousin, I said, you know, uh, one of the things that I found is that, and is that my only opponent is the me that I was yesterday. It's not anybody else. It's not me comparing myself to anybody else. There was a time in my life where had I been in a, on a panel like that and, and one person said something that was their truth and I may have gotten intimidated by it because I would have thought, oh, well, what's wrong with me? Because I don't feel like that and, you know, that type of thing. But that is what God's grace has done for me. And it has delivered me from these, the toxic thoughts that constantly plague us and constantly try to keep us from being a better version of who we are and of who we really are. And so one of the, the, um, the things that I said in, in, uh, on the panel was that when I, when I had, when I realized that I had to do that, I had to start talking myself out of going back to that mindset that I remembered, a African proverb and, and I've said it on, on here before that if there is no enemy within the enemy outside can do us no harm. So when we learn to silence the voice of doubt, the, the voice of I can't, the voice of I'll never, or that voice of unworthiness, when we learn how to silence that voice, it is what will eventually propel us into who God says we really are. And we have to be courageous enough to step into it. We have to trust the God in us enough to step into what he says is already ours. I was thinking about this and I heard it the other day um, that anything, you know, as believers, sometimes we get um, we get too complacent and we we expect God to do everything. We think that all we have to do is 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 pray but we have to put action with those prayers. It's, it's a, a, a joint effort. God is not going to do what we can do. You know, we, we often um, go to this, this supernatural thing as being God is going to do everything. But that when you, when, you, uh, when you dissect that word, you know, going back to school, you know, they, that compound word, when you dissect that word, it's, it's two words, super and natural. And so what it means when we say that we're, we want to see the supernatural, that means that we have to put forth that, eff, that natural effort, whatever we can do, we must do. And then God will do the super. He can't, we can't move people's hearts. We can't align our lives with our destinies, except when we do our part. God is the one who's doing all of that other behind the scenes work. He's the one that's moving and positioning things, but we have to be in position. We have to do our part. So when we talk about the supernatural, that simply means that we are doing naturally what we can do and allowing God then to do the super. Um, you know, there's, I, I, I don't remember who said it, but they said, you know, without God, man can do nothing. Without man, God won't do anything. So 
there are some things that we're expecting God to do, but his hands are tied. It's the only time God's hands are tied is when we won't move because he knows what he put inside of us. He knows that we're perfectly capable of doing whatever it is. Whatever it is, he knows that we're perfectly capable of doing it. So with that being said, Moving into this season in my life has been an amazing experience. And I have seen God's hand over and over and over again, whether it was the favor he's given me with my instructors, whether uh, times when, when things were really rough and I needed assistance and I needed extra time or whatever because of things that were happening in life that it was always, he always gave me the grace and gave me the favor with instructors, with my advisors and and different ones. And this so, I have to say, you know, so many times in my life, I realized I was afraid of asking for help because I felt like it would make me look weak. But what I have learned is that first of all, asking for help is really a sign of humility. It's really a sign of humility and it's nothing, it has nothing to do with weakness. And so I've learned that when I ask for help, I received it. It's just like Jesus said, or he said, when you ask, <laughs> you'll, you'll receive. When you seek, you'll find. And when you knock, the door will be out, open to you. You know, and so when I found that when I would ask, I would always receive. When I sought out ways to do things, I found them. When I knocked, and and it's certain doors that will not open until you knock. The answer to your prayer may be on the other side of a door that you're too afraid to knock on. But you have got to, again, go back to silencing that voice of what if and what what. What if it does work? What if this is the door? What if what I need is on the other side? And what if the only reason I don't have what I need right now is because I'm too afraid to knock on that door? So in all of that, it was so many different things that I've been learning and I've been experiencing as I've been going through this journey of of um, going back to school. And it's, it's like I said, it's just been awesome. Uh, it hasn't been without its challenges, but it has been awesome. And then I went through a move where I um, uh, moved from one uh, place that I was at to another. And that was a, a, another <laughs> big turn because... How many know moving is nobody likes to move? <laughs> nobody likes to move, but it's been one of the best things. Uh, again, in the season that I'm in, I'm just so grateful and so many things that, um, man, it's so many things I could say even about that. Um, but I won't as, as much as I will say this, that there are seasons for everything. There are seasons for everything. And when I tell you seeing God move over a, let's see, what was that? Um, From 19, from where I was, 1990 till now. Okay. So what is that? Like 34, 
30, 40 years. Okay, so in a 30, 40 year time, time frame. To see what God has done, and it's almost like he's taking me full circle. And I'm seeing so many things lining up. And, you know, one of the things that I'm learning is that, you know, purpose has, um, purpose leaves clues. You know, when you, when you want to know what your purpose is in life, or you want to know, uh, where you're going, check out the clues (laughs) in your life. And there have been many, there have been many, and they're all pointing to one God's assurance that I'm right where I need to be. Doesn't mean I've done everything right, because believe me, I have not. Doesn't mean that I've got all the answers, because I actually don't. But one thing I do have is I know who the answer is. And Jesus is that answer. And I have seen him do so much in my life that is just undeniable, just undeniable. And when I look at what is happening in the climate that we're in right now, It's, it grieves my heart that so many still don't know him. Like I said, I know who the answer is. Jesus is the answer. And when I look over my life, when I talk about the things that I've seen God do in my life, It's because he was there. Not because I did everything right. Not because I knew what to do and how to do it. It was times I was totally clueless. Had it not been for him making a way out of no way. If it hadn't been for his leading, his guiding me, I never would have been able to do and and make the decisions that I made without his guidance, without his help. And when I see so many who think that their answer is in man, is in themselves, when they think that their enemy is another person. It grieves my heart because of the climate that we're in. That's we're in a climate now where they're calling what's wrong right and what's right wrong. And if you Use the Bible to clearly show that this is not God's best for us. That somehow you're wrong in doing that. And it's very painful when I see my brothers and sisters and and I see us warring against each other and don't even know, don't even know that we're allowing the enemy to manipulate and use, use us against one another. And I know that the father is not happy with what he sees in in us right now. 
And I know I'm kind of like going in a whole different direction, but I asked him to say what he wanted to say. <laughs> um, a few days ago, I don't even know what I was doing, but it wasn't like I was, um, I was in a, a state of prayer or devotion or anything like that. I was just kind of just moving about my day. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, I'm looking for servants, not celebrities. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. And, you know, when, when, when the Holy Spirit speaks, I don't know about you, but it's like, it's not so much that he's continuing to say things, but you'll, but, but I see like the gamut of what he just said. And I started seeing what, what people see when they think of Christianity these days. And I'll just ask you the question and you can answer it within yourself. But when you think of the church today, do you see our leaders as being servants or celebrities? Do you see our leaders, and I'm, I'm talking about us now, I'm talking about those who call ourselves believers in Christ. Do they look more like Jesus? Or do they look more like celebrities? I'm thinking of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And if you're a believer, our ultimate example is supposed to be Jesus. And so I ask you, in your experience, are our leaders looking more like Jesus washing the feet of his disciples? or celebrities that you can't tell the difference between. If you didn't know and you were going to a stadium or going somewhere to see them, is it more like you're going to a concert or you're going to the Last Supper? And for me, it really caused me to start examining, you know, to re-examine my own heart because I know that that's what the father is looking for. He's looking for the heart posture of a servant. Jesus said the servant is not greater than the master. If he had to go through, if he had to suffer, if he had to go through everything he went through, do we shun persecution? Do we shun when things are coming against us for his name's sake? Because what I'm seeing, and I, don't, and I don't claim to know everything that everybody is doing, but what I see, what I see from a lot of the people that we put on pedestals, and some of that is our, is our doing because we've put people on pedestals and we've made idols out of pastors. We've made idols out of gospel artists and, and those who are in leadership positions in, in, in the church. And so we're just as guilty because we're, we're making idols out of them. 
And, but when I think of the things that I'm seeing, I see a lot of people who, as far as motivational speaking, it, uh, they can they can move a room. They can they can lead. They can get you up on your feet. They can get you going, and and all of these things. But what were the signs that Jesus said we would see by those who follow Him? I'm not. I am not seeing the sick being healed. I'm not seeing demons being cast out of people who are disrupting services, but rather being put out of them. I'm not seeing it. I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing it. And I'm not the ultimate authority. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If there is an issue, if there's a problem, we who are spiritual, those of us who have the Holy Spirit, somebody needs, somebody should be praying, somebody should be you know, submitted enough to the Holy Spirit that, you know, can no devil just come up in my church and wreak havoc? And again, I'm not saying that from the standpoint of somebody who, who knows what everything, how everything is supposed to be. But when I read what Jesus said, when when if you ever just read what Jesus said, we'll see that we're so far away from where we're supposed to be. So when he said that, when he when he said that to me, it pierced my heart because I'm like, Lord. Search my heart. Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If, if a demon were to manifest in my presence, if I would even be in the position to cast it out. So I'm not throwing stones at you or anybody else without examining me first. But I'm just saying we've got so far to go. And Jesus is coming back. We don't have as much time as we think we have. And the truth of the matter is, people are leaving here every day. People you didn't expect to be gone. Age is nothing but a number. And it doesn't matter what you think when that door when when your time comes you're either ready or you're not